think we're checking out this no spoilers movie review. So this is for the new Creep Show series that a lot of people have been excited about, me included, that will be on the Shutter streaming service. Uh, when I'm recording this, it's not out yet. I was actually very, very lucky and got a screener of the first episode, which consists of two separate stories, because that's how they're doing the show. It's going to be six episodes for the first season, two stories per. So each one's about 20 minutes-ish story-wise. Um, so that actually kind of makes me sad because, because I'm like, first of all, it's only six episodes, so we're only going to get six weeks of the show because they're going to release it one per week starting September 26th. Um, so it's kind of sad because, I mean, you will get two stories per episode, clocking in around 20 minutes each, I'm assuming, based off the first episode. Um, but it just makes me sad because, like, I always want more of these types of things. Um, off the bat, I am a very big sucker for these types of shows. You know, Tales from the Crypt, Tales from the Dark Side, uh, Fear Itself, Masters of Horror, stuff like that. I love the kind of anthology horror TV show type deal. And part of the reason for that is you get a lot of different stories at a very um, easy to consume runtime. But you also get a lot of different ideas from that. You get a lot of different directing styles, acting, you know, voices too. And voices coming through in the writing is what I'm talking about. So let me go ahead and and go dive into just the first episode because that's all I have access to early through Shudder. So thank you very much, Shudder. Specifically Whitney Shepard at Shudder who really helped me out with getting set up with the whole screener system and everything. So Thank you very much, um, and I am very thankful, but at the same time, I'm going to be very, very honest, much like I am with all of my reviews for everything, it's not going to taint my my uh, opinion, it's not going to make me not say anything negative or, you know, be more harsh, like that would happen, but, you know, so I'm going to be totally honest about it. So for the first episode, and I will continue to do these, by the way, I'm going to do a review for each episode, but like I said, I'm only getting early access to the first episode that I know of, so the other ones, I'll just be doing it. I'll be watching it while most likely everyone else is, and then I'll put, post the review hopefully the day after or maybe a few days after, depending on what kind of time I have, because I don't make money doing this. It's just a hobby. Okay, so the first Creep Show episode. The intro is fun. Sorry, I'm going off my notes like I usually do. The intro is a lot of fun. I really like that they've kind of set up a mascot, in a sense, for the show that looks good. And it is a cool mascot, in my opinion. Design looks really good. It's it's like practical effects. And I like how they, they've tied it in immediately to the actual creep show um, movies, as well as comics, which... Um, you know, it makes sense. Like, you would assume that that was going to happen based off the fact that it's called Creep Show. So, uh, they did a good job. They paid homage to it. So, for people who are big fans of the movies, people who are big fans of the comics, um, they'll kind of really enjoy. And and it, like that nostalgia is what, is what I'm trying to say. It'll kind of suck them in and be, be like, oh, it, this feels familiar already. So, that's one of the cool things. So the first story, I'm going to talk about each story individually. The first story that they go with is one called Gray Matter. Now, this is adapted from a short story by Stephen King. So, I mean, good way to start because everyone knows Stephen King, and obviously he writes really good stories. So the uh, story by Stephen King, the script was adapted uh, from the story by Byron Willinger and Philip de Blasi. Now, apparently, from what I could surmise looking them up, they're like a writing team, or at least in this instance they are. Uh, they don't have many credits at all. They have like one other com credit. I think it was called like The Commuter or something like that, which I'm not even familiar with. So these guys are relative unknowns. Um, it was directed by the showrunner for this, Greg Nicotero. Obviously, a lot of people know Greg Nicotero. Most likely right now people know him from directing a lot of The Walking Dead so, because obviously super, super popular. I actually don't watch The Walking Dead. I haven't watched it since like the first season because, I don't know. I'm not huge on the zombie stuff, but you know. I have a lot of respect for Greg Nicotero. He actually got his start in practical effects. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know, but his very first gig in practical effects was George A. Romero's Day of the Dead, which I love that film. I think that film's amazing. I also think the practical effects in it are ridiculous. Uh, I believe Nicotero was working under Tom Savini as w as one of his assistants for that one. But then he went on to do so much. Um, his practical effects credits on, um, 
IMDB are like 180 some. It's a lot. The guy's been working for a long time. He does an amazing job. I have a lot of respect for this guy. So I'm happy that he's a showrunner. He knows his stuff. He's a horror horror god in a sense, in my opinion. Um, but he's he's done a lot of amazing stuff. Just look at his IMDB credits. I would, I would encourage everyone to. So the acting. Let's talk about the acting for this. Um, overall, you you need to know going into it that the acting is very much like one of these types of series. If you've seen Tales from the Crypt, you've seen Tales from the Dark Side, Fear Itself, uh, Masters of Horror, the acting is not movie quality. It, it's not like the most amazing acting you've ever seen, but the acting is good enough, in my opinion. It, it's just... Having seen plenty of this, and I'm actually... I, I watched through all the Masters of Horror. I actually have a video on here ranking all the Masters of Horror episodes and kind of talking about them briefly. I'm right now working through Fear Itself, which is essentially a third season of Masters of Horror. And I feel like the acting is kind of in line. And also with Tales from the Crypt, Tales from the Dark Side, that type of stuff. It's more of like a made-for-TV series acting level. And I know a lot of you will know what I mean when I say that. It's not that the acting is bad. There's, It's just not like the best of the best and you have to you have to expect that it's just not going to be that way because these are not crazy high budget movies like i'm sure they were trying to keep the budget as low as they could on this so the acting is serviceable although i will say in in this first story in gray matter the the person who narrates a lot of it and is a main character in it not that great to be honest like it it um yeah, not that great, to be honest. Probably better than I could do at that age because the person is relatively young. But for the story, I mean, it wasn't that great. Uh, but but they they had some big names in this. Giancarlo Esposito was in it. Uh, Adrian Barbeau, Tobin Bell. So it's really nice to see familiar faces. People are very well known and loved. I've actually had the pleasure of meeting both Tobin Bell and Adrian Barbeau. Uh, on separate occasions, very nice people, very awesome, take a lot of time with fans. They're excellent individuals, and I was really happy to see them in this. Um, they were they kind of brought the acting level when they were doing the acting portions. They brought the acting level of the story up a little bit, as you would probably assume because of their pedigree, how long they've been around, and how good they are of actors proven. So the practical effects look quite good. I was very happy with the practical effects. I would expect nothing less from something Greg Nicotero is running. Uh, the CG also looked good. Those computer graphics, uh, I think they looked good for what the lighting level was that they chose for this, at least for the first. Um, I don't think, there's no CG in the second one, I don't think. No, there isn't CG in the second story. But for this first story, there is some CG. It worked really well and looked really good for the lighting level they chose. And for me, like... I know there are a lot of people who are just who just think that if you're going to have CG, they want to see as much of it as possible. I don't really necessarily think that way. I think that if you're going to have CG, you just need to know at what level you're going to do it. If you have the ability and you have the skills and the money, let's be honest, to go, go huge and make it very grandiose and be able to put in so much detail that it can be extremely well lit then go for that. That's great. But I know that not everyone can do that. There are budget constraints, there are skill restraints, there are time constraints, all that type of stuff. So when you're directing it, when you're shooting it, knowing that and being able to get the lighting level at a, at a good level where you can kind of, I don't want to say like hide some of the CG, but kind of, you can, you can hide the lesser level of detail. And so they did a really good job with hitting the lighting level they needed for what they did with the CG. So it looked really good in this. And I was very impressed with that. I was very happy with that. Now, um, it was shot well. That's another thing. The cinematography looked good. It was shot well. It was directed well. Nicotero did a really good job. So here's where we go to some of my kind of issues with it. Uh, the story... The story does get really interesting really fast, and they kind of have to because it's like a 20-minute runtime, but there are some issues. Um, I can imagine that it was very, very hard for this, the, the two gentlemen who wrote the screenplay to adapt a short story, especially a Stephen King short story. I can imagine. I don't know how, how long that story is. I don't know how many, how many pages it is, but you can definitely tell when you watch this that it needed more runtime. 
that it was at about 20 minutes. It needed at least 45, in my opinion, maybe an hour to kind of let you soak in the atmosphere, start to really know the characters, feel about the, you know, have feelings for the characters in one way or another, and just kind of like get into it a little bit more. It definitely felt like there were things missing from the story that definitely are there because knowing Stephen King, like, you know how he writes, like everyone knows how he writes pretty much. He is very complete with the story. He gets in depth. He does a really good job. I just felt like the adaptation from the story to the screen didn't work all that well because it's too short. If they would have let it be longer, and I really think they should have in this case, they could have done a better service to the actual story itself. So for that reason, it felt too brief. It felt kind of chopped up in a sense. And I just, I wanted more. Like I wanted a lot more from it. That said, it's still good. It's still a good story. It just kind of feels like you're getting into it and then you're just like, oh, now we're done. Like it's over. And so it was kind of disappointing for that reason. So I was like, oh man. So let me make sure I don't have any other notes. Yeah, they just cut it too short. And this is kind of the problem, in my opinion, of taking a story and adapting it to a screenplay when you have a runtime that you're given. So as opposed to coming up with a fresh story when you're given a runtime up front. And that's a good transition to the second story in this, which is called House of the Head. Now, this one was written for the series. It was not adapted from a screenplay or a book that I know of. Um, it was written, at, uh, the screenplay and the story was done by Josh Mallerman, who I'm a big fan of. I love Josh Mallerman. He is a really good horror author at the moment. He's written books like Bird Box, uh, Black Mad Wheel, um, Unbury Carol, and Inspection. Uh, I haven't read Inspection yet, but I've read the other three. And he, other, he has some other books that I haven't been able to get my hands on, to be honest. I really want to because I really dig his writing style. I dig the fact that he comes up with a lot of interesting concepts and settings for horror. And he kind of bends, in a way, through his books, uh, your, your idea of what horror is. So I would definitely recommend, if you have interest, Bird Box is amazing. It's way better than the Netflix movie, to be honest. Uh, Black Mad Wheel... Uh, his writing's really good. I didn't really like the story all that much, to be honest. Um, Unbury Carol is very compelling, very interesting. It's not very horror-driven, but it's very cool and very interesting. It's set in the Wild West. Who does that? It's amazing. And then Inspection, like I said, I haven't gotten into, but I know the concept, and I'm very interested to get into that soon. Anyway, so enough gushing about Josh Mallerman. I love the guy. He did an outstanding job, in my opinion, with putting a story together and writing the script for it. And like I was saying, this is the strength of writing something for the runtime versus taking an existing work and trying to pare it down and cut it up and turn it into something that feels cohesive and has a good pacing to it when it's way, way bigger than what you have, the amount of time you have to tell the story. So for that reason, I don't really fault the guys who did the screenplay for the first one because I bet that was really challenging and really tough. I just think they needed to allow a much longer runtime for that story to play out. So anyway, the House of the Head was directed also by John Harrison, who who has been involved in doing some directing for Tales from the Dark Side and Tales from the Crypt. So this guy knows what he's doing. He's been there before. He's worked with this type of show before. So good choice on directing. The directing in this is awesome, in my opinion. So the story really impressed me on this one. The directing really impressed me. Cinematography is really good. And I felt like the acting overall was a little bit better too, mainly just because it it's mainly just focuses on one character. And I wrote her name down. She did a really good job. Kaylee Fleming, young kid. She had to be maybe what, like eight years old, maybe. I'm sorry, I'm not good on guessing ages, but she did an outstanding job for being a young child. I, I She carried that. I mean, she was the main character, so she kind of had to. But she really did a good job in carrying that. Her acting was very excellent, in my opinion, especially for her age. Um, loved, loved, loved the way it shot. Like, all around, it just really came together, and it worked super well. And it, I'm glad they ended with that because it ended on a very, very, very positive note for me. I loved it so much. And this is not, I didn't love it because I was like, oh, Josh Mallerman. I was hoping it would be really good because of Josh Mallerman like being a fan of his, and it met expectation for sure. Because I was also going to be critical if there was a problem, for sure. Um, the story's creepy. 
it's compelling and it has amazing pacing to it. You feel caught up in it from the get-go. They don't take much time establishing anything, and it doesn't even honestly feel like they need to. The story speaks for itself. It moves quickly. You're very engaged the whole time. And, I mean, it's sad when it's over, but it also feels like it was a complete story. Um, so it, it worked very, very well. But I will also say that it also felt like you can take this and make it larger. You could turn this into a feature-length film. You could turn it into maybe a full-size book. Hint, hint, Josh Mallerman. Maybe a full-size book. I would love to read a book with this story as the concept. I'm just saying, please. I, I know he'll probably never see this, but on the off chance that he does, please do this. Um, like I said, it has perfect pacing I wrote down. Uh, it feels, yeah, it feels like there could be so much more to this, but it doesn't leave you wanting like the first one did. The first one definitely left you wanting like, where's the rest of this? It's kind of missing parts in my opinion. Um, so the first one, Grey Matter, is kind of fun, still enjoyed it, but these are the challenges with taking the existing story and trying to cut it up versus the second one, really loved it, had an awesome time. I'm hoping all the episodes are more like that one, but you really never know because a lot of different voices involved. So um, yeah, I mean, you'll we'll see. And that's part of the fun of it is seeing what people do seeing what, what different actors we end up with and how they do, seeing what different stories come up, what different authors are used, what different directors are used, because everyone has their own voice, like I was saying before. You know, from the writing, they have their own voice, to the directing, they have their own voice that comes through and how it looks um, and has obviously bearing on the cinematography as well. So how stories are told are that comes from many facets, and, and that's one of the cool things about a series like this is it's it will kind of be cohesive because it's all tied together in the one series, but they're self-contained stories, and you see a lot of different perspectives because of that. And that's one of the things I really, really love about it. So, yeah, um, I think that's kind of all. Let me make sure. Okay, so yeah, like I said, it, they're going to have six, they're going to have different writers, they're going to have different directors, which is what excites me most. Um, although I'm very, very sad and it sucks so bad that it's only six episodes. It sucks. 12 stories. I'm excited about that aspect, but knowing now they're like only like 20 minutes a piece, I'm going to really enjoy them. I know I am to varying degrees, I'm sure, but it just already sucks knowing that it's so short because I love things like this and I think they're on the right path. They're definitely on the right path, especially with House of the Head, um, yeah, really liked it. So once again, big thank you to Shudder for hooking me up with the screening. Another thanks to Whitney Shepard for helping me out with everything. And um, good job. I'm, I'm digging it. I'm really, really digging it. I know I, I said some things that are not complimentary, but I'm not going to hold back on that. But I think that overall, I really did enjoy this first episode, and I'm very excited for the episodes to come. Um, and I'm going to keep doing those reviews, like I said. So I guess I'm going to do, I always do star ratings on these. So I guess I'm going to do a star rating on this. <sighs> okay. So it's going to be weird because I have to like put the stories together and it's not like feature length film. So it's kind of weird. So, um, overall I have five star rating with half stars in play. I'm going to give the first episode a four. I'm going to give it a four and I don't, and I think that's because of the, the first and second story coming together. Um, I think if it was just the first story, it would be a little bit lower. I think it was just the second story. I think it might be a little bit higher. So I think I'd probably go like a four and a half if it was just the second story and maybe like a three and a half if it was the first one. So actually maybe even a three to be honest, if it was just the first one, first one. It's just the second one's that good that I think it makes sense to go up to a four. Anyway, thank you everyone for checking this out. Please g give me a little bit of help with this channel. Hit that subscribe. Literally takes you a second. It is totally painless for you. It can help me out a lot. Plus, it shows me encouragement. Did you like this review? Did you appreciate that I put this out there? Hit that subscribe. That's your way that you can pay me back. Because like I said, I'm not making money on this. I just want to reach as many people as I can. Start a dialogue. And that's another thing. Put some comments down there. Let's start talking about things. 
How are you feeling about this going into it? Were you one of these uh, very, very lucky people who got early access? Uh, what were your thoughts? Put it down there. Or if you um, haven't watched this until the show, the first episode came out, and now you've watched it and now you're watching this, go ahead and put the comments down there. Tell me what your thoughts were. Maybe you totally disagree with me. Maybe you really liked Grey Matter and thought it was perfect. Maybe you didn't like House of the Head. I don't know. Give me your opinion. I love to hear them. Anyway, uh, you can do the thumbs up, but you don't have to. Mainly do the subscribe. But thank you for checking it out. And until next time, keep it brutal.